p.m. And I will have a motion to. Are there any additions, Amanda? That you were? I don't have a motion to accept, adopt the, accept the agenda as presented. Councilor Moore? I move that Council accept the agenda as presented. Questions or comments? Call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. Well, tonight we have a very special guest among us by the name of Sadie Gray. And we're not, we used to have a podium, so I'm just going to have you come stand up beside me instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. If I had another chair, you could sit beside me. But so, and I don't stand very right now either because then my mic doesn't reach my mic. So, I am going to. Um, Sadie is a recent graduate um, of Disbury High School. And Sadie applied for uh, our Town Disbury um, Scholarship Award. And we reviewed those last June, July, June, June 13th. Anyway, when reading the applications for the Town of Scholarship, we were also impressed with the graduate submissions. And our world is in good hands with the youth today, as highlighted in the quality and content of the letters in the pursuit of post-secondary education by our graduates. Council ultimately selected Sadie as the very deserving recipient of the 2023 scholarship. <clears throat> I personally had the pleasure of watching and listening to Sadie co MC the graduation celebration on Saturday, and you and Sierra did a wonderful job and looked beautiful. <coughs> it was a wonderful day for you all. So here's a little bit about Sadie's high school days and her future. She has been accepted into the University of Alberta for a Bachelor of Science in Psychology towards a psychology degree. I didn't think my work didn't make sense there. And then hopes to complete a master's degree to pursue a career working with youth. From a young age, Sadie's biggest goal in life has been to make a positive impact on the world and believes that youth are our future and have the potential to create a ripple effect of change. Sadie is a volunteer at Disbury Municipal Library, assisting with the youth after school program as well as with the organization and execution of activities to promote cooperation and skill building. And she's also going to work there this summer. The youth reading club? Oh, yeah. Summer reading club. Summer reading club. Hi. Sadie is a volunteer. I already said that. She's also a volunteer coach for Westland Middle School Girls Basketball and the U5 Disbury Minor Soccer Team. In May 2022, the Disbury High School staff selected Sadie to attend the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards which consisted of a four-day camp intended to nurture youth leadership and communication. Sadie ultimately applied and was accepted, only one of six out of 40 applicants, to return as a Rotary Youth Leadership Counselor, where she was able to facilitate youth leaders and gain additional volunteering experience. At school, Sadie promotes inclusion, kindness, and spirit, and has been a proud member of student leadership at DHS for nearly three years. She organizes school-wide events, including food drives, fundraisers, spirit weeks, and has been on a select committee of students in the leadership program that organizes the annual Christmas food drive at DHS. She's helped plan, facilitate, and publicly speak at events, including the Terry Fox Run and Mental Health Week, and ran a DHS leadership Instagram, which promoted school <coughs> events. Sadie has been representing Disbury High School on the Chinooks Edge School Division Students Matter Committee for over three years with 40 student representatives and it's a student input group that aims to promote positive change and there's Chinooks Edge School Division administrative leadership working with them. There is more. Sadie plays basketball and volleyball. She also works at Vital Foods just up until recently. 15 hours a week for a few years. How many years? Three. Three. Yeah. And with her busy life, Sadie graduated with honors with distinction, with a current grade 12 average of 93.5%. I'm 
That's so impressive. None of you would get to the academics last, but <laughs> you obviously had committed a lot of time. Sadie wants to be a future change maker, and she already is. We wish you all the very best in your future, Sadie, and congratulate you on being the recipient of the 2023 Town of Disbury High School Scholarship.
Everyone who so desires will have the opportunity to be heard, but it will be done in an orderly fashion as directed by the chair. Each presenter, when called upon, will take their place at the presenter's table, where Tracy is right now, and state and spell their name for the record. And we'll make sure your microphone's on. We ask that all presenters keep their comments brief and do not repeat points that have already been made. And the perfect purpose of this hearing is for council to consider all relevant information that they require in making their decision on this matter. So I will call the meeting to order at 6.10 p.m. And I just, uh, I'll, I'll repeat that the hearing is for bylaw 2023-12, amending the land use bylaw, 400, 500, and 600 Sean's Drive, and bylaw 2023-13, amending Sean's Village Area Structure Plan. And these collectively are part of a proposal to create new commercial development within the area known as the Sean's Village Area Structure Plan, and update the land use policy area map within the area structure plan. And it says you'll show a map. That, that one's working. That's not working. That one's working. That's okay. Yeah. What's that? Is it open? So these were first considered at a council meeting on May 23rd, 2023, where first reading was approved for each of the bylaws and the public hearing was set for June 27. And I'm not going to continue to repeat the year because it was this year. The public hearing notice was posted on the Town of Isbury website and in the Alberta newspaper. Responses received were included in the agenda package for Council's consideration. So tonight uh, we'll have Tracy talk first, Town of Disbury Administration, to introduce and provide an overview of the proposed actions. And then I don't believe the applicant's here, Tracy, so the applicant won't be speaking. We'll have Council questions. And we'll have an overview of feedback that you might very well include in your first presentation. And then anyone from the gallery can ask questions. First those in favor and then opposed. We'll go back to council questions. Any additional comments from applicant or administration? Final questions from council and then we will close the public hearing. So with that, Tracy, I hand it over to you to provide that uh, information. Thank you, through the chair. So this is a consideration to change the land use zoning of three undeveloped parcels within the Chance Area Structure Plan. And as we can see here on the map that is shown, the first map showing them colored yellow. So we're changing them from a residential use to a commercial use. These lots are bordered on the south side by Highway 582 and the east side by the railroad tracks. And so the proposal is to have them changed to a commercial district and therefore all the properties that are adjacent to the highway will then be for future commercial development. This also comes along with a bylaw to update the land use policy map within the Chance Area Structure Plan to ensure that that map shows the correct area for consideration for future development within this property. As has been indicated, it was circulated to adjacent landowners and relevant government agencies as well as advertised on, in the paper and on the website. And no objections or concerns were received as a result of, of that circulation process. We did receive some, some comments back from some government agencies, but there was no concerns from those comments. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions from Council at this time regarding this? Okay, do we have any questions or comments from the, though any opposed to the air structure plan and land use bylaw changes? Or anyone who'd like to speak in favor from the gallery? So I see none. So I'll give Council one last opportunity, well not, not last, but one more opportunity, and I see no hands. Um, Tracy, anything to wrap this up? Not really, other than, as I've indicated, these lots being along Highway 582, residential maybe isn't the best use next to a highway and also within proximity to the railway. So commercial development is likely a better fit in this location. Thanks for that. 
One last chance, Council. So short, informative presentations. Keep us silent. Because <laughs> you've answered all our questions. Thank you, Tracy. So everybody that is here, we deal with this under the bylaw section of our agenda, and that's uh, item seven. So thanks for that. So at this point, I will close the public hearing. 6.15 p.m. Thanks for the package, Tracy. Okay, so we got item 6.1, council reports. And uh, I'll start with our deputy mayor. Okay, June 1st, uh, I attended PEC. The 7th, PGC. June 20th, ICC. 21st, Director Session. And on later that evening on the 21st, an Economic Development Strategy Meeting. Um, my regular scheduled meetings with the Library and Chamber, I had to um, miss because we had these meetings. So I haven't even seen the minutes from those yet. Um, that's my report. Thank you. Mr. Bezzard? Uh, thank you, Mayor Hunter. I uh, attended the Alberta Municipal Caucus and uh, also the regular Water Commission meeting. There's nothing outstanding to report and on each of these other than uh, we're still getting good potable water and that's the goal. And uh, the Municipal Caucus was uh, most interesting. They had a lot of discussion on water, but uh, nothing that affected us because we're kind of in an isolated area from Innisfil to uh, Crossfield, so we're kind of out of their purview as far as water discussion goes. And uh, they were concerned about uh, loss of water, and they were concentrating most on the cities of Calgary, Red Deer, that type of thing. So, um, which really had no effect on our receiving a good water supply. And that's my point. Thank you. Councilor Moore? Um, I had attended almost all of the meetings that our Deputy Mayor attended, and that's it for me. Councilor Winter. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. Um, the RDR Monk is planning a tour of the water treatment plant in uh, Red Deer on July 20th, so I'll be attending that. Um, other than that, the only thing that I would report on is how wonderful the grad uh, party support of the parade, uh, the downtown parade, everything it was yeah, really, really special. Thank you, Mayor. Um, along with the uh, rest of council, I attended the Economic Development Strategy Session on June 22nd, and I also attended the um, Policy and Governance meeting on June 21st, and we, have, we talked about the Community Standards Bylaw, which, which will be on our agenda later on today. And also, I, along with Council Winter, I was also at the Grad Parade, and it was a uh, Great time. Um, and I also want to remind people that this weekend on Canada Day, uh, there's some festivities going on at the museum, so I'll stop all mine. Thank you. I, in June, attended the KPGM, and, and we'll have that on the agenda in July. Um, so I will report on that. <clears throat> I was at I was honored to be the reviewing officer of the annual ceremonial review of the 3025 Service Battalion, Royal Canadian Army Cadet Corps. And they had 17 awards they gave out to these youngsters. And it was, it was just really impressive to watch and, and uh, how proud they are and how dedicated and committed these cadets are. And some very deserving youth for the awards that they give. So if anybody ever gets a chance to watch the annual ceremonial review, it's, it's, it's worth uh, attending. And 
I also had the pleasure of attending, oh, I, I do want to say they had a change of command, which is not happen every year, but their uh, outgoing regimental sergeant major um, passed on the, they have a, it's not a wand, but it's a big, I should have asked what it was, but anyway, they had the, the, the changing of command. And the graduation, I uh, attended half cap, you know, but I had the pleasure of attending the grad celebration on Saturday. And I brought greetings from council and, and spoke to the graduates about the importance of community and the importance of youth in our community. Attended the Hardware <coughs> grand opening. Um, a great day. Uh, so excited for the Van Dykes and, and the store. And they opened October 21st. And uh, they had to wait till now. <coughs> Corporate gets very involved and the pandemic was on. And so they wanted to do a big splash and they really did. And we thank Cone Harbor for adding to the vitality of the strong business community in Disbury. Attended the Central Alberta Mayor's meeting last week and had a really good round table. Um, nothing formal, just catching up with everybody. And the Alberta Municipal, Alberta Municipalities Leadership Caucus, Summer Leadership Caucus, which did talk about water, but um, the sustainable, state sustainability environment committee is currently reviewing, reviewing water policies of Alberta municipalities and they're up they're starting to update the foundational water management principles so we had an interactive uh, opportunity to answer some questions and through mentee as usual we had the president's report um, and then we talked about the future of municipal government recommend um, inter-municipal collaboration changes that they're asking for input from councils and members. And an election debrief, um, all their board, the directors of, of Alberta municipalities presented all these. But we were in Diamond Valley, so we got to hear Diamond Valley's story as well about amalgamation, how very difficult and challenging it is, and, <laughs> and how they're forging ahead and, and, and enjoying the moment. And still calling it Black Diamond and Turner Valley, but they, the uh, official uh, name, of course, is Diamond Valley now. But it was, a, it was, I thought it was a really interesting caucus and some good, good exchanges. So that's what I did for the past while. And with that, unless there's any questions, I'll have a motion to accept council reports as presented. Councilor Buzzard. Uh, just one side note, I remember a couple of things. I attended the grand opening of Home Hardware, which was a great community, great people. They serve as well. And in reference to the Black Diamond uh, Turner Valley, they are using our streamlined financial model to do their finances for the amalgamated towns. And I found that very interesting and also very impressed because they selected our financial method to uh, complete all of their financials. So that's kudos to our financial department. And I would move that uh, we accept the uh, council reports as presented. Comments, questions? Call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. And we have the CAO report. <coughs> Do we have anything to add to that, Amanda? An assistant CAO report or something? No, I do not. No, we do not. Okay. This is your only chance so far. <laughs> Any questions from Council? Council McCoy? Um, uh, just a couple. To start with, uh, how is the street sweeping going and the street sweeper itself? I understand it came out of the hospital. Just like an update if it's completed or what's going on. Mm -hmm. Chair. Mm -hmm. Chair. Thank you for the question. Go ahead. Through the chair. Yeah, so we had some challenges getting parts. Um, I got lost in shipping and then there were some tariff problems, but got it all sorted out. The parts have arrived. Um, I'm sure it took a little bit to get it figured out, but yeah, it's back up and Thank you, Mayor Hunter. Um, I, I, I wonder in the, in the grant update, the 2022 grant update, what, um, 
I, I was expecting to see the library grant there as well, and I didn't see anything like that. So I'm wondering if, if that's coming down the road or if, if why it wasn't included in the, in the grant update. Is there an update on that already? No, we haven't heard anything at this time. Okay. Do they really just to phone and bug them to prompt <laughs> any information? Or is that not regular practice? We just wait for them. No, we do um, follow up when, mm -hmm. when it's taken some time, but usually in those cases we don't get a lot of information. They did say the end of June, I think, didn't they? Like around the end of June that there would be a, some information? I believe so. Okay. Councilor Moore? Uh, yes, I was really impressed by the 30000 dollars a month in unmetered water loss that we have gained uh, with the new equipment that is able to find these and it seems like we have very sharp rocks underground so i'm really <laughs> pleased with that and i'm excited that 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 will probably continue to um, help us with that unmetered water loss okay comes from windsor again Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I want to add to what Councilor Moore had indicated in the 30, it's actually $37,000 a month that, that's indicated through the two leaks that were found. And that, that represents $444,000 a year, which is 42% of our annual water cost. Like, that's significant. That's huge. So, yeah, out of a million and five fifty thousand, that 444000 is significant. So, I think uh, really important to take note of that. Very. Councillor Deputy Mayor. Yeah, um, I had my hand up first. No, <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I just wanted to tag on to what they were saying. That is what I identified in the CAO report too, and I think uh, kudos needs to go out to our, mm -hmm. our public works guys for and gals for um, finding those and repairing them. And um, I didn't realize uh, the actual amount until Councillor Winter just indicated, and that is phenomenal. So I think we, we need a big shout out to them. Thank you. We certainly look forward to the utilities <laughs> budget adjustments next year. <laughs> Did you have a question? Oh, I thought you had one. Um, are there other questions? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. Um, it seems to me that, that the, we have uh, the 5 Club in the on Bowling Green now, and, and there was to be a lease put together for that. I wonder if we have an update on, on, on whether the lease is put, put in place or, or where we are with that. Amanda, is there an update on that? Um, administration is uh, currently working on that, but it hasn't been finalized or put into place yet. Thank you. I am glad to see and hear. I know we, we sat with the, um, someone from the infrastructure department at FCM and talked about this Rural Transit Solutions grant, so I'm glad to see that they're working with Lions to pursue that. That's going to be hopefully helpful for them. And I had a question about the asphalt repair, like, um, you say there's an enhanced scope, and I believe, Amanda, that we'll be hearing back. Once there's identified, um, once the enhanced scope is identified, we'll just get an update on that, whenever that's ready. Because right now, we know there's um, between 20th and 18th being done on Main Street, 20th Street, and then Craig has been tasked with taking on that enhanced scope. So he said he was excited about that, so so are we. <laughs> so, I don't expect an update tonight, but I guess it's just a question that when it is finalized, we'll be looking forward to that update. I think everybody likes to see our all the streets uh, being improved. Anything else um, from Council on the report? Anything to add I'm over there? Okay, I'll have a motion then to accept the CO report as information. 
Deputy Mayor. I move the council accept the CAO report as information. And there were no questions before, so I will call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, um, this is this, the, the reports are <coughs> a more informal process, but I, I want to remind council that we have uh, a new procedure bylaw and some things that we might want to be reminded of that only town issued devices are to be accessible and used by council members during all council meetings and committee meetings, other than such uses as allowed by the chair. All personal devices shall be turned off and put away unless your use is authorized by the chair. All council members wishing to speak to a matter will notify the chair by raising their hand and will hold their peace until called upon. Council members will not be disruptive or disrespectful. The council member making the motion shall have the first right to speak to the motion. Council members may speak twice to a motion and may only speak a second time after everyone who wishes to speak has spoken the first time. After a member has spoken twice to a matter, they will not be called upon to speak again unless providing new information to the motion. Comments or questions must be relative to the motion or matter being considered. Those speaking will address their comments or questions to the chair. Council members will not engage in side conversations with other members while other members have the floor during the debate, nor be disruptive in their behaviors to the chair or the decorum of the meeting. Yeah. 
Well, we were, well, we're gonna. You were here last week to so speak because the uh, Palestinian government's committee was dealing with this right now. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on June 21st, uh, PGC had a meeting and we discussed the community standards bylaw. Uh, we are recommending that it comes forward for first reading, that it be referred back to the policy governance uh, committee again uh, to finish up the schedules and to finish some final tweaks on the bylaw. But we are presenting uh, some changes to mobility aids and their use as pedestrian vehicles and then also on 27, which is off highway vehicles, OHV, which were just uh, align us with the Traffic Safety Act. It's just, we're just removing some red, red tape and we're looking just for first reading, then we're gonna throw back to the community to finalize everything and bring them forward. Okay, mm -hmm. you wanna make a motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I move that council grant first read to bylaw 2023 14 community standards and report to the policy and governance committee for review and recommendation. Okay, any other comments from the members on the committee? I think you highlighted, I think it's important that our, that our public is aware that these are under review because, well, we do see a lot of mobility aids on the road and we see a lot of off a lot of pop highway vehicles, but we see them recreational vehicles, miniature vehicles. So it's it's for safety and for concern and care and and to help out everybody understand um, the direction the community is taking on these smaller vehicles or pedestrians that are on the road. <laughs> so thank you for that introduction and the motion. Does anybody else have any comments, Councillor Moore? I'm just wondering um, if they um, say the golf cart looking things, whatever they are, mobility aids, uh, if there is, are, like, are we moving to not allow them on the highway? Are we moving, I mean, on the streets? Are we moving to put them on sidewalks? I'm, I'm not sure what direction we're going from what we're getting here. Thank you. Uh, we discussed it at the beginning, and those like four, like like those door mobility aids, they don't fit on the sidewalks, and actually under the Traffic Safety Act, eventually they're not even allowed on roads. No. Go ahead. Yeah, there's there's certainly some issues with some of the the vehicles that are being used on the roadways at the moment. Um, the actual little mobility scooters are, are really fall under the um, pedestrian uh, regulation. So they are really supposed to remain on the sidewalk and we see some of those on the road. So this, this needs to, there, there's lots of intricacies here to work through. Uh, we have people that um, obviously don't have licenses that are out driving on the roads that are their vehicles don't meet any safety criteria. They have no safety equipment on them as far as signal lights, brake lights, etc. Light, et cetera. So there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done on, on how that's going to look and that's why it's going back to the committee. Um, so you probably, um, when it comes back from, from the committee, which I only sat in on the last two meetings, that's why I'm speaking to it. I'm not on the committee, I was the uh, alternate. Um, but you'll have more of those questions answered once they can kind of do a deep dive into um, probably more so protecting the lives of the people operating them uh, because it's it's without collision devices and, and like people are going to get injured so there has to be some some great consideration put on on how this is going to look and that's what the committee is going to do. And very mindful of the mobility offers to our, our citizens, so it's a very sensitive mm -hmm. issue. But um, looking forward to the continued discussion and bringing back the right bylaw. <laughs> so we have the motion for first reading and sending back to the PGC. Any other comments? We'll call the vote then. All in favor? That's carried. 
Okay, we have uh, anyway, point one, the partial MR disposal. We have I'm just kind of my motion, so that's why. I will let you just straight away. I think Deputy Mayor said you can if you want to defer that. Yep. Okay. Um, go ahead. Would you give consent to remove a portion of the municipal reserve and mark designation within plan 091 block 15, lot 35, MR? Okay. Is there any, any questions here? Councillor Windsor, and then Councillor Oh, she you made a motion to speak first. Thank you. Um, my question is like, what is the value of that chunk of land? Because the whole property was assessed at one thing, and if we're going to change it, I just wonder what that costs. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Do you have any information on that, anyone? There isn't a value in the motion which we hear, the document which we usually see. It's being sold. Well, I'll let the 11 and answer your first question. Um, I don't have that, the value of that um, to be able to answer that question at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It seems to me that we're talking about amalgamating this with another lot, and and so I'd like to know what the sale price is. What what are we selling this prop, piece of property for? I think that's the same question, kind of just well, it's different. different value. I know. I I interpreted that though at what we would sell it for. So would that be the same answer, Amanda? You know, <laughs> cost or the what it's being purchased for? No. Okay. Councillor Deputy Mayor? I think I'm going to start calling you Councillor Deputy Mayor. How's that? <laughs> That's fine. I think what was brought to us is that um, that will be assessed, um, that the value will be established on that. There has to be a, an establishment of a value. That hasn't been done yet, as far as I know, because we don't have that information. But, but that definitely is part of the consideration of this is is they are getting um, I think uh, I don't know how they do that who does that assessment that is <coughs> well, being done with that so we remove the portion of the MR um, no. to give consent to remove the portion and so going forward maybe the the price and what all that assessment is coming back because right now we're just making the motion to set the public here, like removing it first and then setting the public here. So if that helps everybody move forward, just um, and Tracy's taking notes, so I, I believe I'm correct. We are just taking it out of there, and then the public hearing will consider the removal of the portion of MR to designate to a different uh, amalgamation of the property. And those, that information, I believe, either will be there or will be asked for there by council. So, if, <coughs> go ahead, Amanda, and then Council McCoy. Um, so, I believe that the land sale itself has already been approved by council through a motion. That's what is in the document. Council previously approved the consolidation and land sale during the April 11th, 2023 council meeting. And so that's why we're moving ahead with. But to speak to that though, if we have a land sale council, then we guess the price of the land was sold for um, as part of that. So I get, is there other information? See, if this isn't passed tonight, um, the public hearing can't be until September. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to put any pressure on anybody, but can the information 
nothing can happen until this nothing can happen until this whole MR designation is approved and moved through the public hearing motion state and then it, then we make motions for second second and third hearing after that. So I believe that maybe the information should come back about the price and about the sale. Um, but in the meantime, can't really hold up this because you can hold up the actual readings and you can deny right for that to happen. But it has no bearing on having the public hearing the price it. So that's, and we can deny, you know, we can consider that at the next, at the public hearing, whether or not we want to proceed with that reason of designation. Do you want to speak to that, Tracy? To the chair, no, that is correct. We can the public hearing um, report will be will be a little fuller report and have the, all that information involved. I've I've got I've made some detailed notes so that I can ensure that council has all the information they need before they can before they decide on second and third reading of the at the public hearing or not sec, pub, not second and third reading yeah, second and third reading because according to the municipal government act, when it comes to disposal of land, you need to have a public hearing to consider it. So that's the process that we're going through is initiating first reading this evening and setting the date. Great. So those questions will be answered when it comes back. Does that satisfy everyone? Councilor Moore? Yeah, I checked back on the um, April 25th minutes of the April 11th meeting and it does say to approve the land purchase as discussed. It may have been the action of doing it rather than price, but I don't know, and we will have that information later. But this was a decision that was already made. Okay. Yes, it's, it's there. And I do know there's questions about land sales generally come back with that information. So we'll just ask for that, and I'm sure we'll be there. So we have a motion to give consent to remove a portion of the municipal reserve designation with plans. I'm not going to read all the numbers. Are there any other comments or questions at this point? I'll call the vote then. All in favor? That's carried. And to set a public hearing date for July 11th, 2023, regular council meeting for the removal of a portion of the municipal reserve designation within plan 0912831, block 15, lot 35, MR. Okay. Any Councilor Rezek? Uh, would that be during a special meeting? Are we on hiatus at that point? It's at a regular council meeting, just like tonight's public hearing. <coughs> but we would ask you to come back anyway if it was a special meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially. They can zoom from there. It, all those techies in Japan are very smart. I will. Any other comments? And I mean that respectfully that a lot of our technology comes from <laughs> Asia, so I appreciate that. I will call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, we have. Uh, um, 8.2, development of a three-year operating budget. And who, Councilor Morris, do you Yes. Thanks, Tracy and Leanne. Oh, what happened to my page here? Um, so I will, um, I will make the motion first, and um, then I do want to speak to it. Um, so I move that administration update and bring back the multi-year operating plan, three years. Um, this is something that came to the committee and, and uh, Council Williams is the chair of the committee, but he missed a couple of meetings there. And um, this one is one, I think that it was there. But um, I just wanted to um, point out the, the background on this that talks about the multi-year operating plan that was page 28 in our budget. And um, the revenues are something that is a 
are fairly stable. And what this is talking about is doing an actual um, multi-year budget for the water and wastewater, and we all have policies about moving, you know, the, the, the um, assumptions that we do for that. We should really have a man that talk to this. Um, but for the actual budget for the council, what we found out is that although OLDS doesn't uh, approve the budget earlier, that they had to open it up twice afterwards to make uh, adjustments and amendments. And um, with ours, we kind of wait until everything is in there and we have all these perfect numbers that we can pop into it. But the multi-year operating plan on the revenue side was less than $1,000 on the, on the year than our actual budget that was, that was proposed. The thing that makes the difference is what we choose to do for expenditures, like uh, for reserve and capital and um, debt repayment. And well, that's not optional usually, but unless we do something different with it. Um, but the thing with this is all of the things that can be predetermined are already in the operating plan. There are estimates about how much we think inflation would be and how much they think that we will need to do and how much the growth will be, as well as it can be estimated ahead of time. And so when we ask them to do a multi-year operating budget on top of the operating multi-year operating plan, it is duplication, and uh, I think if you look through the multi-year operating plan, it has everything that we would expect. And so the committee is recommending that a three-year operating plan for the budget organization be updated and return to council ahead of budgeting for 2024 to use as a starting point for the 2024 budget process. Because it has all the estimates and, and that are available at the time. And then the operating budget for the water, wastewater, and solid waste is, is that's another. That's another moment. Yeah, but that would be a good budget. <laughs> okay, all right, so on the first one. <laughs> so we're talking right now about the update to bring back the multi-year um, operating plan. Yes, ahead of the budget. Councilor McCoy? Um, just a quick question. I'm a little bit confused why this couldn't be one motion that recommends to develop a three-year operating plan for the town. Why well, you're specifying a different process for the multi-year operating plan, which I don't know if it's been updated or not, but and yet do something separate for utilities department. Why wouldn't you do it for everyone? I must have missed the I mean, it's committee's direction, but um, Amanda would do you want to go ahead and sure through the chair, I can try to add some clarification. So, with the youth, the difference between the three-year operating plan and the three-year operating budget would be an operating plan is just that, and it also it doesn't have to balance, but when we go down, like when we come into the years that it's set for, it's not actually an approved budget that we could spend money on. Right. But a three-year operating budget, if you choose to go that way, it would set budgetary amounts for those years. So the idea of doing it for the utilities departments, outside of all the tax supported departments mm -hmm. is utility departments are supported by utility user charges and if we had a budget that was set in advance we could also set the the user charges and communicate that sooner for our customers who are our residents and business owners Thank you. and then if if there was changes that needed to be made you could still amend those budgets, um, which is why the second part of the motion, which would be developing a framework for multi-year budgeting, because you're gonna have a higher risk for air, um, have to ending up with either a surplus or a deficit, um, which you have to somehow say how you're gonna address. <coughs> Thank you. Other 
questions? <clears throat> I, do, you know, I don't have any about the plan because I, I, I like the definition of plan. Um, and, and I like the, the starting point. There has to be a starting point um, from where to go. So those are appreciated. And no other comments, I'll call a vote on the operating plan. All in favor? That's carried. And I move that administration develop a three-year operating budget for the utilities departments, including a framework for multi-year <coughs> budget. Do you want to speak to that? I think she spoke to it so well. I don't think okay. So. Any questions or comments? Councillor Windsor? Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I think that if we take this out and make the utilities and individual budget separate from our operating budget, it's going to create a, a reduction in our operating budget of about $3 million. And I'm wondering how the general public is going to be educated as to why the operating budget dropped by $3 million. The other thing I think I'd like to have an idea of is that um, we've just seen that we're, we've uh, uh, recovered or, or reduced the, the uh, uh, loss of water uh, to the tune of about 40%. This is the second hour. question though. So you have one question first? All right. And then, so the one question is? Is, is the, how are we going to educate the public that we're having a $3 million decrease in, in our operating budget? That out. Does anyone on the committee want to explain that, or, or maybe defer to Amanda? I don't. Know. I don't believe we're taking it out, but I would love to refer it to Amanda. If this, the operating plan is a plan, and when the operating budget happens, it's going to include everything that all that's going to be included in it. So, if Amanda would like to add to that, it won't change my frame of mind. So, I, so part of, through the chair, part, part of developing the framework for the multi-year budgeting would address uh, questions like Councillor Windsor had. Um, but when the town's budget comes for the year of approval, it would, it would still include the utilities department budgets. It's just that we wouldn't necessarily be discussing those in length at that time because it's already been <clears throat> set for the three-year period. Um, alternatively, you could develop um, just the user rates ahead of time, but by doing that, we are still setting the budget. And, but you don't have to say that you've approved it for that period of time. You could just set the user rates ahead of time. So it's another way of looking at it. That makes more sense that the, like I know we've struggled with getting timely user fees for, for water and they come in January and February and you need them sooner than that so people can be ready and the town can fill appropriately. I am still not understanding it's for your budget because we wouldn't be able to approve it through your budget. You approve budgets year by year, and I don't think, and I'm confident that councils can't approve three year budgets because they're not, so they're, they'd have to be looked at again every year anyway. So why not make it a plan and then it would still be flexible like a budget? But if it's a plan, like you define plan in here, um, that's a good definition in there, and I think it, it would be more palatable to mm -hmm. have a plan for utilities, and in that case, I think that would be a good idea, because then you have timelines as to when these, and the Water Commission, we can usually blame them <laughs> for coming in so late, but, but, you know, maybe we can bother them with projections earlier, and I think all of these probably want those costs earlier, so if I could suggest, I think the, the motion would be a little more easy to approve, Vote for if it said plan. I, I would be willing to amend it if that would work for you. 
uh, to uh, that administration develop a three-year operating plan for the utilities departments, including the, do you want the framework or not? No? Okay. I'm going to stop there. And if that, do we believe that's really, that will really help us now, not be up, um, adjusting our fees in April <laughs> and missing that for, not that we're trying, we just have to pay our costs, so. Thank you for that amendment, appreciate it. And any other questions or comments? Go ahead, Dr. Mayor. I guess through the chair I would ask, um, Is having these divided, if we're doing the exact same thing, it's really an overall budget thing. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking administration, if we're doing a three-year multi-year or three-year multi-year operating plan, and then we're doing a three-year multi-year operating plan for utilities is necessary, and is a three-year operating um, multi-year operating plan really going to help administration or is the thing that really helps administration um, the budget that's like which is the best for administration does that question make sense I guess first of all it's a very long question but I think we understand it okay <laughs> that's fine Amanda? <laughs> Through the chair, so this is a good conversation um, to make you think about all the aspects of this. Essentially, your first motion did say to develop a multi-year operating plan, which would include the <coughs> operating or utility departments. So that probably is sufficient in us developing a multi-year operating plan for the utilities departments. However, it, what we would do is still pull out utilities, make it a little bit more robust, because we'll probably have, we have different data points for utility departments, like the number of houses and the number of users, the estimate on water usage, things like that. And so we can, would be able to also plan, do a, a long, a multi-year plan for the user rates. And that's what really would help. And I think what we ultimately are looking for, council to consider, is multi-year user rates, or at least setting them in advance of the budget process to allow us time to communicate it to our customers. So, in a roundabout way, Yes, your first motion is sufficient to cover that. But if you want to um, put a little more emphasis on developing the user rates, then you could also make another motion to that extent. I'm just wondering, because we want to do what is best, um, it sounds like setting them ahead of the regular budget process for the utilities would be helpful. Um, and we do work with the capital budget first. Um, is there a willingness to be able to look at the utilities division budget ahead of the regular budget process as well so that these things are set before we come into the general budget process? If it is, maybe just segmenting them enough to be able to work with them ahead of time and set the utilities a budget ahead of the regular operating budget. Is that something that would be helpful and should we do it? Um, should this be discussed here or should we do, be doing it in the committee? Mm -hmm. That's lots of questions, so. Could I? Having this motion doesn't add any work. It just separates them out. So, is that kind of along the lines of your questions that 
Two motions won't create any more work because the direction is to get the utilities identified earlier. So is your question that, will that happen then, that it will be helpful in, in getting the utility rate set before the budget, um, while the budget's in, under construction? Is that your question? Yes. Kind of? I'm, I'm you can not. restate your question if you like. Because <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> I, I would like to know if it would be helpful, it sounds like it would be helpful to administration to have us deal with the utilities budget as a whole before we get into all the niggly stuff that we do with the regular operating budget. Um, if that is so, if that could be said ahead of time, that would give us some certainty in that area and they can use their data points for that specifically. So I'm wondering if we could just, can not take away that second motion but still have it in place and hopefully do the three-year operating plan for the utilities department ahead of the rest of the approval of all of the budget. Is that clear? Yes. Does that make sense, Amanda? Do you? Does this enable you to be more productive than you already are? <laughs> Um, no, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't think. Just as productive? Yes, <laughs> just as. That's what we're asking. Okay. So, but having the motion or not, I think either way, based on this discussion, and passing the first motion, that the direction for the utility charges is, is known. Okay. So we don't need the second motion and I would put your option. Okay. That's fine. Appreciate that. So the motion is withdrawn. Can we make a motion instead to get the water commission to give us our rates sooner? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Councillor Windsor. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. Just just a comment on that. I know it's is that um, in, in the waste commission there is an agreement. Uh, in the agreement, there is a date that we have to have the budget set prior to. And I wonder if there isn't the same for the commission, and if there isn't, why isn't there, and maybe we should be lobbying for that. Okay, so that's, the, I, pre, I brought that up, so I appreciate that. Maybe we should look into that. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with, we don't have any more motions, but it's a good thought. Um, unless you want to make a, I mean, we're on the water discussion. It would be relative if you want to make a motion to look into that. Or Councilor. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was in. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Hunter. I, I will move that that uh, Council directs administration to uh, review the agreement with the Grand uh, or Mount View Regional Water Services Commission to see if there is a date at which in the agreement the date at which the uh, annual rate is to be provided to members. And if not, and to, to try to set a date that's more timely with our budgets. Councilor Bowser? Uh, thank you, I, I would, uh, the rate usually comes down in April, mm -hmm. typically, or, or before, I usually give uh, our administration advanced warning that it's coming. Um, obviously, the administration won't move on until they actually get that number, but um, I don't think it's, I don't think we can direct the commission to do that, I guess is my bottom line. Um, we can ask them, but I don't think we can certainly direct them to do that. Cause I think that's their point though, April's too late, because what Amanda's trying to do is get ahead of the budget so that if the numbers are all in the budget when we pass it and we don't have to, the four months of rates and fees are lost <coughs> um, if there's any adjustment to them. So yes, we can, and I think we are asking, I don't think we're directing what we would ask. Yeah, I think, I think the, the idea that they give us an indication that it's coming is helpful to the budget because usually that number is the same as what was given earlier. So uh, they'll say it comes down in April, but they give you the number 
in advance. So in November is when we need it. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to ask. Do we single ourselves out as special? I don't know. I can try. No, we'll send a motion and a letter. Okay. Do that. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you're part of this. Happy <laughs> <laughs> Mayor. So I just want to make sure that the um, wording uh, would have the word ask in it. Request. Or, or request. A request is like, could we get this sooner? I think they may have a reason why we can or can't, but I think, uh, I think, um, I, I, I don't know if Mr. Bas Baslick is right, but I'm kind of agreeing with him that we can't really direct it. So. Um, okay. Just so the, the um, wording of the motion indicates that it's, if it's not in our agreement, that we explore the opportunity or possibility to get it in. I just want to understand that that's what I'm holding on. Well, <laughs> thank you. I don't think we'd ever demand anything from anybody, but, um, and I agree with the request, but and Amanda might come back and have some information for us that is from the agreement that we'll just put this all to rest. So maybe we make a motion after the fact, once you bring back the information on any clauses that would indicate what they should. And then if we do need to request a different direction, then we, we go from there at the next meeting. Would that be fair, Amanda? Yes, I, I, I would ask Councillor Windsor if you would want to a friendly amendment. Um, just request that we research that in the current agreement first, and then we can bring that report back, and then at that time, council could decide how to proceed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brown. I think that's what I asked for in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just to get the to find out what's in the membership agreement. So will you read that back to us? That it moved by Councillor Windsor that administration research the current agreement with Mountain View Regional Water Services Commission on the date which the annual rates are provided to the members. And bring back the information to Council. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Bowser? I'm just wondering if there could be a, a conflict with the six members on that board. The if their budget time aligns with ours, if not, you're going to get confliction between everybody saying, well, I don't I want it in April, I want it in February because of my budget uh, timeline. But it's something we'll discuss when we get there. Right. Any other comments? Call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. We are a bunch of thinkers here at this table. We have item 8.3, the fire hall standby generator. administration to engage with Western Generator to finalize procurement details and enter into a supply and delivery agreement for the fire hall standby generator for no more than $90,000. All right, other questions? Councillor McCoy and then Councillor Bazard. Uh, just a quick one. You know, less money isn't always good money. It, like, they're all different numbers, like model numbers. How do they each compare to each other? Maybe a, a rephrase that what 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 led the this motion this generator to be presented to council? Thank you. Is there any special features or what were the criteria that you explored that led you to this? Generator. Thank you for the question uh, through the chair. So 
In receiving the bids, uh, the criteria evaluation was set out for basically, as we put it, for cost, delivery date, and warranty. Um, the, the units that were submitted were basically equivalent to one another. They all supplied the same amount of power. They all used the same amount of amperage. They all had the same amount of phases. Uh, they all provided voltage regulators. Um, they all provided the automatic transfer switches and the enclosures that are required. So it come down to cost and how quickly it could get here. Um, and so those are the factors that we used in the evaluation. Any question? Thanks for that, Craig. Councilor Bowser, had a question. I don't know, but I want to make a motion on this. That's well, there is a motion right now. Okay, so well then I'll, I guess I'll do the comment for the motion, I guess. I, I don't know what you want me to do here. Well, you can comment on, there is a motion to accept the Western um, generator. And if you have comments or questions or concerns, then this is the time to okay. discuss uh, them. I'll try this. Um, I, I would, uh, because of the, the three people who were asked if they had any used equipment, uh, chances are um, just comments that they would rather sell you a new one, a new one than a used one in any regard. But I, I would like the administration to explore um, further options to find uh, used equipment if, if possible. And uh, further, I, I, it was brought to my attention that there is uh, a generator available which would more than supply what we need at the fire hall uh, with major savings far, far below this number, and uh, but well, my qu basic question is, who would I refer this person to in administration in order to further discuss that opportunity through the trip? Well, the motion is to accept the Western generator. So, um, but what you're saying is you'd like more options for used. Right, I don't want to vote on this. Research, research on use, well you'll have to vote on it unless it's withdrawn, but you can vote against it. No, I mean positively, because I don't want this to pass if we're going to look at something different, that's my question. Like, yeah, and so you're suggesting that administration explore used generators outside of these companies that have already bid? Right. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Because if I vote in favor of this, it's done, and I don't want yes. to pay yeah. any grant if I don't have to. Yeah. So council would have to agree to send it to uh, postpone this and send it back for further exploration of used generators, if that was the case. So I guess my, my, my question kind of is, um, if, if someone has brought forward to, to Councillor Baswick, um, I'm assuming that's what's happened, is there's been a discussion um, about an available generator, uh, how or who would investigate that piece of equipment? I guess, what, what is that process? Um, I, 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 can, I don't, we don't have a process, I don't think. I think what the direction here is, is that council would have to agree to have used generators for the explorer. So, and, and I, I don't think we can go and look for things and then bring it here and say, well, right. I think council should like my idea and, and have Cray explore it. What we're after is getting, if council wants use or purchase of a used generator explorer rather than the new generators, then they'll. We, need to look at use. we have to set the direction to postpone this and look at used and then bring it back to July up. But that would be a council's um, will. And if they're happy with the new one, they'll vote for this. And otherwise, the motion would have to be withdrawn and a new motion made. And council will show that in their vote, I guess, with the motion if it's not withdrawn. So those are the processes when we start 
have people shop, want to shop with council instead of with the, our administrative team. And Craig had a comment, uh, Man, is that okay to a Craig comment on that? No? Because the procurement process is, is the process that's just been done, and we don't, unless council says just we only want to use one, don't bring us back anything else, then that would, that would be the only time they wouldn't bring back new equipment. Councilor Williams. Thank you. I have a question. What, what do you think the lifeline of, of a new one? How long does a new generator last? So most of the generators that we, thank you for the question, sorry to the chair. Um, so the generators that we operate for most of our lift stations have a 15 year sort of life cycle. We load test them every year so we make sure that they're constantly capable. Um, but through that process they also get a little bit aware. But we just replaced the one at the South Ridge lift station um, and it was up in that 15 year range, if not really long enough. I'll just remind you too. To the chair, yes. That's direct, direct, sir. I know, I caught that out. Yeah, that's okay. We all have. Is there any other conversation on views? Is there any interest in that? Proceed. Uh, Councilor McCoy, then Councilor Bezzer, and then Councilor Williams again. Um, my only question is, like, when we, we sent, did we not send him out to do this process? And now, after the fact, we're telling him to go out and do another process. And to rule council, that's all. Yeah. No, 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 I understand. But I'm thinking, I like Councillor Basil's suggestion that, you know, has the, what that cause the ship already left the park? Councillor Basil, can I have Councillor Basil? Right, I think uh, this particular type of generator in its environment is used very, it's not running steadily, it's used in emergencies and probably tested once every two weeks kind of thing, so there's no hours on it to speak of because on, unlike a generator, I say a water pump station, it would run quite a bit, probably consistently. So, um, and this one apparently, but I might do that though, Councilor Bowser, because that's operational, that we don't look after how they run, we just look after what they can buy. If we approve this, I understand, so. but there's one of the difference between a standby generator and one that is actually full functioning. So one of the fire halls is going to run in an emergency situation, it might run once a year, if at all. So it, uh, it, the longevity, I guess, is longer in that respect. That's all. Councilor Williams? Thank you, Mayor. My, my concern is like, if you buy a used one, what is the, how long was that one last? Like we could buy and use one of my last like, three years, and then we'll be back here again asking to buy a new one. I think I think we should just go forward with the motion as presented and get one. Can I Council more in that motion? And are you willing to withdraw it? Okay. So the motion stands as um, this is in the agenda. I'm not hearing the will to pursue further used generators and the motion, we'll vote on the motion as presented in the agenda then, unless there's any other comments. Can we record it, please? Yep. We can record it. So the motion is to authorize administration to engage with Western Generator to finalize procurement details. No more than $90,000. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried then. So we have Chinook's Edge School Division Joint Use Planning Agreement. I should call it a planning book, actually. Any motion on this?
Okay, questions or comments, Deputy Mayor? So I've been going through this uh, plan, I, I, not that I don't have one to compare it to, um, but I have a concern, and it may be invalid. Um, I'm just, are, in this agreement, are we assuming any financial costs associated with this agreement? Uh, in short, is the provincial government downloading costs onto the municipality? Is there any cost associated with this document that the province should be paying?
that I thought it was, I was told it was going to be, and that's why we fundraise. I enthusiastically fundraise. And then all of a sudden there were security concerns. They hadn't planned it right. They couldn't close off the area. And then again, when it came to the high school, our library was already having constraints. And there was already one joint use library in the, sub in the school division. And I asked if we could not participate in that, make it bigger, and have it for public and, and um, high school as well. And their answer was very similar, security. Um, and they couldn't close it off. We could have moved it back further on the lot. We gave them that land. And you see all the rules in here about all the things we have to provide to besides the land. And then, for some weird reason, we paid $800,000 for the old school site, which means, according to 16, we should have got it for free. And so, because of how I feel, I was misled, and I and um, I think that this is it, it's an certainly an improvement, and I'm told we've improved it even more. So I will be voting against it. Councilor McCoy, and then the mayor. Um, I was going to bring up the same thing as Dorothy, in that my kids are of that age where West Glen was brand new, and so I remember raising money, and I remember how much the town itself actually paid towards having this as another facility for our, for our residents to use for weddings or whatever. I think there was problems with the management of, the, of it. Maybe, and so they just sort of deferred it, and they say it's both or whatever. But I think before this is signed, I think we need to go back at them and say, number one, about the West Glen School monies, it would be in your book somewhere back in like, the 90s and, um, and ask that and also ask about, um, I'm sure I think, just dropped on my head. High school, West Glen, um, one more. High school park? Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyways, I think they need to be included in here. Oh, the land. Like, according to this, we shouldn't have had to buy that. So we yeah, I agree totally with you. But I really think that even on Schedule B, it should say Westland, gym, playground, field, kitchen, lobby, and washroom. At the very least. Well, I think when we move on to also keep those in mind, um, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I can't support this in this format either. Uh, we pay school taxes in this town. We, um, I'm a proponent of schools. We need them, and I cherish them. But I don't want to get a document signed that I can't have a question answered as to, is this costing us? Is there a download of cost in here? Because we've seen these things sneak in before. I think to, to, to what Councillor Moore said, um, fundraising um, and, and it not being followed through with what, what was promised. And, and we need to, I think, um, as a committee of the whole, probably really delve into this agreement like we would an ICC agreement before anything is signed. Okay. I was going to ask. Like, first of all, I don't think, what was our previous agreement with that the province mandated? Have, is this a new mandate that the provincial government has brought down? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we never had anything. Go ahead. Yeah. So this um, was supposed to be in effect, so these agreements were supposed to be in effect by June 10th of this year. Uh, we did receive a letter from the minister extending that until June 10th of 2025. So there is time for you know, these conversations. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, the, I was going to ask what was the revision, but that doesn't even matter because I'm not in favor of it. I think, too, the minister that we just, in the last term of the UCP, we have a new minister now, maybe this is the time to take some concerns and, and bring them forward, and it absolutely isn't red tape reduction. And I think 
their business is just that we would provide land if there was a school to be built, and the rest of the business is between us and the schools. And I, I, I don't know why they want to get so involved in how schools and municipalities collaborate. So, and or and uh, not schools, but our school divisions, because our school divisions are very good with their own schools, even on how they collaborate with us. So they're just tying hands, and I think it's worth some pushback and some discussions and some really big revisions and some a discussion made with the new education minister that would get us somewhere. So I, I don't see that there's a lot of votes in favor of approving this tonight. <laughs> and we might not even need to record it actually. <laughs> so Councilor McCoy. Um, just two things, also on page 22 or 83 of our agenda. In, amongst all those bullet points is a paragraph that speaks against the fact that we paid all this extra money for use of the facility because it actually states that it must be a school program or an event offered by the school. So that would totally restrict us. Um, so that should also be looked at. But I'm wondering if maybe instead of voting something down with a recorded vote, if maybe whoever made the motion might consider um, sending it back to the administration for further review. I like the idea of committee of the whole. So I think there's some input the council would like to have before it's redone. And if we have two years, let's again let's use it just like our just like our RCMP retroactive pay if it's to 2025. I would ask the question if uh, our community service director is happy with the agreements with the schools right now, and then we can live for two years trying to get this to what to fit Disbury. Thank you for the question. We have wonderful working relationships with our schools and we are very satisfied with the agreements with them. Um, they're satisfied, I believe, with the agreements and the, the access to our facilities. Um, and, you know, we would not want to see any of that change going forward. Okay, so there is a motion. Um, would anybody, would you amend that motion? I didn't write down for me. It's Councilor McCoy. Oh, yeah, it did. Councilor McCoy. So, refer to committee the whole for further input. <coughs> and then from there, we'll create that recommendation back okay. for the process. We have a year and a half to do this. <laughs> we have to get right on it. Is that a, you accept that friendly amendment? Absolutely. Or a whole new motion, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you want to repeat that? Do you have any comments, Councilor Bowser? Do you have any chance? I'm cool. Okay. Well, I know you're cool. I just thought you might want to. <laughs> I know. Luana? <laughs> 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 I'm going to read it back. Moved by Councilor, jo uh, by Councilor McCoy. That's a joint use and planning agreement with Schmidt's Edge be referred to a future committee of a whole community. I will call the vote then. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, we have items 8.5 appointment to Cape. Councilor Williams. Thank you, Mayor. I move to appoint Mayor Lana Hunter as the municipal representative to Central Alberta Economic Partnership and Council Williams as the ultimate. Comments, Councilor Williams? I'm just wondering why are we doing this now? When is there? When is there uh, AGM? It was November last year in December, another time. So that would be after our organizational. Council McCoy left a vacancy that they've offered for Disbury to fill. Oh, and I thought Councillor Williams was filling that. No, well, that's not, not on the board. So this is for the board position? For a different position. I have to be, I have to be appointed as a, a rep, municipal rep, and then I can be appointed as the interim, as the, the uh, director for the next three or four meetings. And then there's a, then their AGM will, because it's only a one year position, so they've asked us that we would like to fill it for the remainder of the year. So, they, so they're having meetings throughout the summer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, July, August, and September. Oh. Yes. I did not know that. I know. They're keeners. <laughs> so, I, does that answer your question? Yeah, because I didn't realize it was 
than some of the motion states, but it, we can say that it could be, you could add to it to review it at the organizational meeting. I would be comfortable with that. Yeah. You're fine with the motion as it is? I'll add to review our organizational meeting. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion to appoint Mayor Hendrickson on the Central Alberta Economic Partnership Board of Directors to be reviewed at the October organizational meeting. I will call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? How does that mean? carried. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So we have council meeting schedule adjustment item 8.6. Councilor Moore. I'm with the council group changing the Tuesday to September 12, 2023 regular council meeting to Monday, September 11, 2023. All right, any comments or questions? Call the vote, all in favor? That's carried. At 8.7, the Disbury District Chamber of Commerce. Any side? Councilor Moore. I move the council approve the Didsbury District Chamber of Commerce's pro proposal to assume the responsibility of the Didsbury's community groups sign located at 20th Avenue and 15th Street. Well, thank you, Mayor. I just have a question, a couple of questions. Uh, on the first sentence here, it says the Chamber of Commerce is presently seeking funding for a shop to resign. Are they asking for funding right now, or are they just asking for the use of it? It's for the use, and then there's that crowd funding. What's it called? Crowd. Crowdfunding will be how they raise the funds for the site. We, we won't be responsible for that. Carry on. Um, what will happen to all the present signs on that one billboard? Like the lines, the elks, and all that. Doesn't it say they'll stay there? Mm -hmm. Is that in their letter? It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in their letter. Too. They might approach you for new ones, but <laughs> new would be better. That would fit the honey roll, but Councillor Windsor. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I would like clarification as exactly where this sign is, because there isn't a sign at 20th and 15th. At 10th. <laughs> and 20th. I know exactly where it is. But I'm saying that the address that they've given us is not correct. So you're asking for an amendment to the address? I, yeah, I think that that would probably be appropriate. And also that we are not the Didsbury District Town Council. Was that the motion? Yeah. It's in there. Well, it's not the motion, so I, we can't edit their letter. It's not our letter. Councilor Windsor. Mayor Hunter, I always had the notion that it was the Lions that had that sign. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would like to know who actually owns it. Or who erected it, who put it up. Um, I will amend my motion because I need to change the address, so I'll say 10th Street Revenue. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I think it's ownership by default after 40 years. <laughs> but. I have to say, that's something, when I was with the town, I was looking into the late 90s to get that replaced, so I'm really excited that the chamber <laughs> wants to do this. And we could certainly, we could approve it unless someone else is staking claim to it, but I haven't seen anybody staking claim in 40 years, so um, that would have to be another amendment. But. We can think about that. Council McCoy has a comment. Um, I'm just, based on what I just heard, my concern is that are we burning a bridge with a, a, an organization that thinks they're looking after this site by assigning it to someone else? Like, should we table this and get the administration to come back and say, absolutely, the lines are not in charge of this site? Because 
it, whether we know it or not, we could really insult a group of people by kicking it away from Councilor Buzzard. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. Yeah, I, I do agree with Councilor McCoy because that it is important. I mean, although it's there's a it's been a long time, but still, whoever was there, if they're still around, they would probably object to the fact that it's just been handed over to another group without at least talking to them about it, letting them know that we're taking over their responsibility or that the chamber is. So I, th I think it's prudent probably to find out who owns the darn thing and, and uh, get a short dialogue about it. Here you can have it and away you go and everybody's happy. I think it's all just a simple amendment to the motion to um, approve it in principle and unless someone objects and then the chamber could carry on with those bringing it back to another meeting. Um, it would get the bases covered if we found that out, but I, I know that was 2000, 2000, 2000 in 1999, and no one was taking claim to it back then either. So, I mean, we could just take it the ownership because it has been looked after. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> I would really be curious who claims to be looking after it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, another concern that I have with this is that because they're also going to use it to promote businesses downtown, and they've been asked this question by businesses that are not members of the chamber, that they will not promote non-member businesses on the sign if they take it over. So you're restricting, you're telling the town businesses that they're either a member of the chamber or they never get to advertise on them. I'm just looking at their picture that has a 1906 and home hardware. And Does it say that somewhere that they want to? Well, no, I was trying to tell me that a group asked about country Christmas and what's for it. You're not a member of the chamber, you don't have to say. No, well, that's true. Says the sold down. I would defend the chamber that they would have to ask for that, not have hearsay at the table. Um, Councilor Windsor? Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to be handing this over, the responsibility over to the chamber on town property. I wonder if we should, in the motion, have a requirement for an agreement of some kind or another. I think that's a good idea. And I, you know, I think we should commend the chamber for stepping up to do this. And, and uh, you know, council could find it in their hearts to to really applaud them for this. And, and if if they want to restrict it to chamber members, that, that's up to them. And if they don't, that would be up to them. And if they want to, I do believe I agree with the lease or, or some agreement about how, because if it starts to go shoddy again, mm -hmm. we want some back in there. But maybe the amend so the amendments to the motion would be to, if there's another group that's, that's owns this and wants to step up and have the administration to research that. I guess they bring it back, but in the meantime, Chamber could go ahead if there's nothing, um, no one comes forward. And I think it's pretty easy just to contact the groups that are on the sign. That would, and then the other part of that would be to have the administration enter into a, an agreement on upkeep of the sign. And even creative content, like we don't want any, and neither does the Chamber line unsightly signs, but we'll trust the administration to have the agreement, but friendly amendments on that? Councilor Moore? Um, yes, I would agree to add that they do a simple agreement with the sunset clause so that it can be reviewed. So, like, in five or ten years. Um, and I, I don't we think we need to tell them to do it tastefully you know like that that's yeah if you have an agreement that they're going to do it then i think that is a business agreement and it's understood um, so i'm going to say and add in principle 
put a proposal in principle to assume responsibility just in case somebody goes, well, that's mine, which I don't think after 40 years of letting it fall apart on town property, it's theirs anymore. So that's as far as I'm going to go with that. <laughs> So we want to ask you to get back to us, <laughs> unless you want to. Okay. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Moore to approve in principle the Didsbury District Chamber of Commerce proposal to assume the responsibility of the Didsbury Community Sign Community Groups sign located at 20th Avenue and 10th Street and enter into an agreement with a sunset clause for use and maintenance of the sign which is located on Town Line. Perfect. That's what I said. Yeah, I thought so. All right. Okay, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So we have item 8.8, Disney Golf Club Third Annual Memorial Tournament. Councilor McCoy? Um, I made the motion to approve the donation of $850 to the District Golf Club um, for their third annual memorial tournament on Saturday, July 15th, to be funded from the community grants program. Any comments? Councilor Windsor? Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I, I can't support that motion. I can't support the uh, financial contribution or donation at all. Um, there's no indication of a, a park package here at all. That if, if based on what we see from the information, anybody who donates twenty dollars is going to get the same promotion and, and exposure as somebody who, who donates ten thousand dollars. There, there's no no indication as to what kind of uh, coverage and, and exposure you're going to get for that. Besides which, I'm not sure that that does anything for the participants. And, and what I would like to, to suggest a friendly amendment that we provide, um, provide swag uh, to each of the participants, uh, and, and that would be our donation. That, that, that to me would do more mileage for anybody coming from out of town that's going to have to go home with a memento, and anybody who's in town that's supporting this thing is, is going to recognize that the town actually was involved in some act of capacity. Otherwise, they may never know that the town was involved at all. Okay. I'm good with that then. Yeah. What is it? So, do you want to repeat that? Um, that, that, amendment? that to approve a donation of swag to the Ditsbury Golf Club for the third annual memorial tournament tournament for all participants to be funded from the community mm -hmm. grants program. Any other comments? Call the vote then. All in favor? That's good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want Disney Sway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we give our graduate <laughs> scholarship person a very nice bag of swag tonight and one of our special leather books. So, so we have uh, correspondence and information. Deputy Mayor. I move the council accept the correspondence items presented as information. Right, any comments or questions? One, two, three. I don't know what I didn't see. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I'm just wondering, we got an invitation here. Are we going to respond to the invitation? <laughs> That's my first <question. laughs> <laughs> And 
Does anybody have a motion about about today's parade? Do you want to go? I can't. Let's do that through me. It's not that I don't want to. I'm not around. So you make a motion to send somebody. Yeah. We're thanking for the invitation. Does anybody want to go? Do you want to go? Thank you. No. But I okay. You have a motion. Does anybody want to go first, though? Would you go? I just, uh, so what, what I was going to say is I'm not sure that there would be value in having uh, a representative at their their parade. Like, what what value do we have of having um, I don't know Tyler uh, Tyler from the Duke Tyler Graham and again why what, there would be no value in him coming to our parade. So I'm just wondering if there's any value. <laughs> having anybody go to the Bowdoin Parade, they're not even in our district jurisdiction. I just, I'm, I'm just asking the question. I think they go voluntarily. Mm -hmm. That maybe we wouldn't pay to be in a parade. I think we'd be responsible. Because <laughs> But we need to provide camp. Oh, do we? Yeah. 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 We have to provide our own camp. They gave me a barrel. I don't think we have to. But if we're going to end up camping, so I will move then that we respond to the invitation, thanking them for the gracious offer, but that we respectfully decline. Okay. And I know it's, it's kind of a tradition in the, the northern communities to do that. We don't do that so much in our, to the south. They have a lot of fun, so that's okay. And uh, so the motion is to send a letter of thanks, and we'll word that way. I will call the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, that's good. You want to go? <laughs> no. You can go. Well. Okay, they do such a thing. They have all the council and everybody all together at the beginning. Well, then go. Yeah, you can go. No, I'll be in there and done that. Okay. <laughs> Not with these mayors. There's new mayors. <laughs> so, okay, we have council meeting highlights. This is Council Morris' letter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I uh, will say, moving along on uh, Sean's development, I'm pleased to see that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hunter. I will say the development of a three year operating plan. I'm going to say the detailed CAO report. I'm going to say that I'm very excited that our sign is going to be looked after at the entrance to the community. Community sign that created so much discussion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too late. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Um, I'm going to say that um, the, the student, um, Sadie Gray, that uh, came and received an award tonight was, was very well deserving of, of getting it and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for her and, and uh, I'm proud of her. She was a remarkable student. Thank you for that. Councilor McCoy. Um, I'm going to say that I'm saying how it was knowing that Minister McIver is back in the middle school. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that we don't call him MacGyver because he's not MacGyver. He's MacGyver and we have to straighten out some members in our <laughs> municipalities on that. Councillor Bazard. Thank you. Well. All chores and all the good stuff. Oh, right, you know, the water losses is one. Yeah. To me, that's a big one. And we need a credo to Joe. He wandered in there and fixed it in real short order. You know, so 
there is value in our public works people, you know, and administration choosing the right people to do that kind of work. Who would expect that he would know how to do that? And uh, but he did, and it's saving us just a bunch of money. And uh, anytime that happens, of course, uh, I agree with Bill. You know, um, it's 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 stellar performance by another administrative person, and I, I appreciate that. And going forward, we can only say the highlight, not the, <laughs> not the reasoning behind it, not why we picked it, not that. So you made it really hard for next week. Yes, yeah, so everybody. Everybody's going to have a monologue next time. I didn't set another precedent, did I? <laughs> no, well, yeah, you did. Didn't you? Okay, so I don't see. Phil doesn't usually have questions, but he might surprise us tonight. He wants to invite us down to the campground on Saturday. He's had a kid's bike parade down there. Aww. Some fun things happening, so check out the Canada Day poster that y'all got in your emails. And thanks for doing that, by the way, Phil. That's super. Oops. And I'll stop with that, because otherwise it'll be monologue. So. <laughs> I am going to ask for a, a, a motion to adjourn to close at 8-11. Councilor McCoy. All in favor? Oh. Very good. Oh. Okay, two minutes. Okay. Two minutes to I had to be here for my birthday, so it's your time. I know. I said, oh, <laughs>
Can you drop it in my mailbox or just email it? I will be in the next week. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am. That's. Do you have time? I won't be dropping in the mailbox. Yeah, we're live. I guess. No. Your email too. Okay. Not in the mailbox. Did nobody by week? Did anybody move to come on a call here? No. Yeah, because. Okay, so first motion is on the lease agreement, and you can read it as verbatim. Councilor Windsor. Thank you, Mayor Hunter. I'll move uh, the council to approve the three-year lease agreement with Prairie Whistle Food Company with terms as discussed, which will be in effect September 1, 2023 to August 31, 2026. All right, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. And then, Council Board, do you want to do the ICF one? Or the Alberta Municipalities? Yes. Um, I move that um, Council members participate, who want to participate in recommendations to the Alberta Municipalities regarding ICF, have the input to Mayor Hunter by July 7th. Thank you. 2023. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Call the vote all in favor. That's carried. And I will have a motion to adjourn. It's trying to look this way and Council Browser wasn't looking. Council Williams had a stand up. All in favor? That's carried. At 8.56.